Are you looking for something with a lot of space when you get there, but uh, you don't want to be driving a big and intimidating thing on the way? This little 24B Integra right here, she just might be the ticket. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd with Bish's RV. I realize I'm wearing a Winnebago coat while recording an Integra. Um, I'm sure one company will appreciate that and one will not. Uh, neither here nor there. This is the 24B model. It is a short floor plan with a big full wall mega slide, basically. It encompasses a, uh, a dinette, a huge pantry and closet and a bed to create a large living space in a smaller driving size. Now this is still a stretch chassis. They still do all their normal ride and handling things on this. Um, to uh, to give you a good experience while you're on the way there. And by the way, I don't know what this is going to sound like in terms of the audio. It is insanely windy out here, and there's just only so much that can be done with that. When I take trips off site like this to my sister stores, I have a limited time, and I got to record basically no matter what the weather conditions are. So please bear with me and just maybe mute it until we get inside if you have to. Frankly, you probably want to mute me regardless. But what are we looking at here? Uh, you know, where, where Carbilis this has a beautiful farmhouse decor which lightens and brightens it up inside. But um, if you're not aware, Integra and Jayco are our sister companies. This is very, very similar to say like a Red Hawk and a Gray Hawk, but it is not identical to either. The best way I can describe this is that it's in a trim package somewhere between a Red Hawk and a Gray Hawk. Think of it sort of like a Chevy and a GMC pickup, where, uh, you know, both of them make a 1500 but the GMC is a slight, just a slight trim package above the common Chevy. Not that there's anything wrong with that. That's what we're looking at here. They, they don't make exact identical copies of things. Uh, so like, if you want a little simpler, a little less expensive, look at a Red Hawk. You want a little fancier, but you want that smaller floor plan, look at something like this, kind of cool. Now, one of the things that really just jumps out at me immediately when I step in here is that farmhouse style decor because uh, you know this is already a smaller coach that I, I kind of call it like punching above its weight class. It feels bigger in here than it actually is. And that farmhouse lighter, brighter decor really opens it up. And I think, I think classes it up here nicely. Um, I've noticed, uh, you know, whereas the towable RV industry has done a lot of the farmhouse stuff, the motorized RV industry has been a little more hesitant to it. And uh, it stayed a little more brown on brown on brown. I kind of like this. I kind of like it personally. And I'm curious, you know, what do you think about it? Now, we are carpetless, ventless, easy cleaning, including the full wall super slide, basically, which we're going to get a better look at coming from the other direction. One thing I uh, want to point out here real quick is if you would prefer it, you can get a theater seat in place of that u dinette in this model. Um, something that's not as obvious, though, uh, you kind of see how that's hanging out the side there. There's one, two, three seatbelt locations around this thing. That's one of the cool things Jayco uh, does, or Integra, I'm sorry. Again, Cousins or whatever. They, um, they're they very good about making sure that you can always seatbelt at least as many people as the RV can sleep, if not more. And uh, they, they pull test their uh, seatbelt stuff for, I think it's a 1,000 pounds uh, of pressure for uh, a, a solid minute. That's, that's an intense amount of pressure. That's enough pressure that would absolutely screw you up. You would get hurt under those kind of conditions. So the, the seatbelt mounts are designed to be, you know, overrated for a potential accident situation. Um, now, up here, you've got a 15,000 BTU air conditioner. And in a little space like this, I don't think you're going to need more than that. And we are seven foot tall. We're also double ducted AC runs to really keep that air flowing around effectively uh, to, to keep you cool and comfortable. And this is where you kind of see once again where uh, the Odyssey, it's sort of that in-between space between a Red Hawk and a Gray Hawk. Um, your uh, Integra's always having those uh, overhead cab uh, automotive bonded inset windshields. And I want to specify all those words because it's not just a window they slapped in the front of it because historically those things have had problems. Now, when we go uh, outside, I'm going to show you even more ways that they've done things up here to make sure you don't have like a leak related issue in this upper space. Um, but while we're up here, I want to kind of look at the detail work. So, uh, you know, the household USB outlets, I love just the, the little phone pockets, you know, it doesn't have to be much 
just sometimes the little details like that make a big difference. Obviously, you see you've got the uh, privacy curtain for the forward bed. That is a power uh, shade in that overhead cab so that when you, uh, you know, are, are driving straight into the sun or something like that, or if, if the RV is facing west and the setting sun's blinding you, you can always close that down and have uh, actually between the, the blackout shade and the bunk shade, you could have a couple layers of privacy in there, which would work pretty well. Uh, of course, you see the ladder. You see that uh, bed there. That is 750-pound rated, their forward over cab bed. And you notice, um, this was actually the first floor plan that this manufacturer created uh, with the spin-around seats in a Class C. Now, they had existed before that. I'm not trying to say they were the creators of it. I'm saying this is the first one they did it. And when we spin around the other direction, I think you'll see why it's really, really useful. Because this model, being smaller overall, regaining this as living space, oh, that's a, that's a big deal. But notice, too, again, it's a little industrial looking, but carpetless, easy cleaning, especially up here where you might be getting in and out of gas stations. I like that I can easily scrub that down. Now, this uh, multifunction infotainment system over here, this is awesome. And I'm so glad they're now just integrating with things, uh, you know, like Apple Maps and uh, Android Auto Mode. Because I know that when I drive, I prefer to use my phone's GPS for a couple reasons. And onboard GPS, I swear you have to, uh, like, you have to constantly update those things. Whereas these update for us, and they do it silently and automatically every time you open up the app. So... Um, the, the thing is though, your, your general like navigation app on your phones, not always the best suited for the motorized life. There are a few apps that you can get very specific to that. Um, and if anybody is an experienced user of those things, I would really appreciate it. Actually, if you left a, uh, a comment and say, Hey, I drive a motor home. This app allows me to program in my specs so that you know, it doesn't route me under a low-hanging bridge or something like that. I think that'd be really awesome information to hear from an actual owner, if you don't mind. So you see that right there? That is um, right next to the GM's office. But um, I got to test the horn, right? <laughs> Sorry, boss. <laughs> Anyway, spinning us around, we're in the driver's seat right now, taking a look over at the passenger seat. The, um, you know, I try to be fair, um, the, the E450 chassis, when you are in the driver's cab area, it is a little bit tight for a bigger person like me to spin themselves around like a record baby. Um, you know, I, I often find it actually a little easier and more comfortable personally to go out of the driver's cab door and then actually walk around the coach. It's a little bit longer walk, but I got long legs and I just always feel like I'm, I'm leg bashing on every single thing. Now, again, small coach with big feels because this is a full wall mega slide, basically. Um, that farmhouse decor, again, opening things up very nicely. You have the option again over here for a theater seat. Now, remember that when you're sit, like when you twist around the, the cab chairs, that's where your entertainment center really kicks into play. And that TV is on a swing arm, actually. Why don't I do that so you can get a better view of it? So like I said, that's going to be your real entertainment center for the, the, the you know, your front cab chairs. Almost like you would almost repurpose those like your recliners when you reach a destination. If you go with the theater seat option, the thing is like theater seat to me implies a good entertainment view. Well, there is an option to add a TV in the overhead cab area. So you could actually have dual zone entertainment on this, you know, facing a couple different directions. Now, I have a video detailing, um, it's actually the Red Hawk, Gray Hawk production plant, but those are very close cousins to this. And you get to see the actual inside, like the dinette construction and whatnot. They are thicker, heavier, stronger, big, thick plywood and reinforcement and stuff like just their dinette construction. Um, they are uh, very heavy duty, very safety oriented in their factory uh, a as well, which I always like. They're very uh, worker safety concerned and conscious, I appreciate. I love that overhead accent light. And I just, I love that uh, they didn't go with that pff, 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 disco blue light that like everybody else seems to use. It, nobody, literally nobody asked the RV industry to just start slathering 1980s neon blue lights all over every single coach. But it, they're just like, uh, I mean, you know, we can put blue lights in every single thing. We're like, nobody asked you to do that. They're like, we're, we're on it, boss. 
Now there's also absolutely nothing that says you have to use it like a dinette, even if you don't get the theater seat. If you just want a little extra living, lounging space, you can just kick the table out of there, toss it up on the overhead bed during the day, get it out of the way. Uh, Gas-strutted overhead cabinets, uh, all pocket screw construction, very common within this class. I don't want to belabor that point too much, but I do want you to know what you're getting here. And even though it's kind of one open room, this big chunk of cabinetry here in the middle, I think it really does a lot to help define the exact interchange really between like the living area and the bedroom. Um, I mean, and just man, some serious storage there. And this is actually one of the things I like. The first time uh, they kind of came out with this uh, floor plan was in sort of like a, a B plus sort of job. And it felt a little lacking on storage. And in this kind of revised version here that we're seeing in a more traditional class C, uh, they found extra little spaces, including this entire rear wall closet to go along with some serious mega storage, just to give you an idea. So this is one of the uh, the little cushions so that when you do spit around the uh, driver's cab seats, you do sit up a little higher. You don't feel like you're sitting on the floor. That square cushion or rectangle technically is um, the uh, dinette conversion cushion to uh, flip that down into a sleeping space. And then just some serious dresser space back here. That is one of the things I like about this one. You absolutely uh, drive a small rig and get a lot of stuff when you get there. Now, I have a question for you. I would love some input on this. We're looking at a gas electric two-way fridge, a pretty decent size one given the size of the coach. I think that's fair. But at the time of this filming, they are not offering a 12 volt option. I would be curious uh, to know what you think about that. And sometimes when you start saying 12 volt, solar starts becoming part of the conversation as well. You can option onto this RV a 190 watt uh, go power solar package that also adds a second um, chassis or uh, yeah chassis battery um, the uh, or house battery as it were not chassis battery I'm sorry uh, but so you know I'd be curious you know would you how would you want one of these outfitted two way fridge 12 volt fridge with without solar like how would you deck out your Integra be kind of curious uh, and once again. Uh, if you're more familiar with some of the history of our videos or just the history of the, the Jayco Integra uh, relationship, um, this is kind of like you've got the, the bedroom TV up here. Those are those things where I've said like it sort of bleeds the lines between Red Hawk and Gray Hawk a little bit. It's, it's more of a Red Hawk floor plan, more of Gray Hawk features, if you will, kind of a different, it's a bumped up trim package. And I, I, I didn't discuss what was in the big old black bag. That is like a, a serious heat blocking uh, windshield shade for privacy and to help keep the interior temperature on this thing uh, a little bit more under control. Now, as you saw, that is a folding bed, but as you also saw, it's like a foot thick, dude. Um, and I use the word dude uh, lovingly only because I don't know your individual names or uh, gender preferences, as it were. Now, up top here, you've got dual element, blue and white reading lights. So, uh, you know, whether you're the Smurf skin or the Smurf hat, uh, you got the colors covered uh, over here. And then just the little details, just the little locking bathroom door. It's a tiny thing, but it's it's those little things that kind of define your use and enjoyment over time. I'm a fairly long-legged, gangly guy. I felt there was plenty of hip and shoulder room here, but my legs were awful close. The toilet space is okay. I would not want it any smaller than that. Pardon my footprints in there. We'll get those cleaned up for you before you ever take it home. You never know what's in there. Um, height adjustable shower hardware is another one of those things you pick up when you go, say, from a Jayco to an Integra Class C. And the, uh, the ceiling height in here, not too awful bad. And what is it about a bathroom window that just makes it feel so classy by comparison? And today's road mode slight close break sponsored by Forest River because they like to annoy Integra. Just kidding. I don't do sponsorships. Uh, I always want you to know that anything that I'm saying is just my own personal two cents uh, free of any sort of influence from some outside party. It's one of the nice things about carrying so many different brands is I get to see what they're all doing good and what they're all doing that could be better, you know? Uh, like I said, thick mattress, but you do lose it in transit, so kind of keep that in mind. And uh, thankfully, the way that it works, you can still uh, finagle your way here into the bathroom for a little, you know, 
on the fly potty stop. Unfortunately, the coach does not have autopilot, so if you are the driver, uh, you will probably need to continue driving or find a place to pull over uh, before relieving yourself. Unless your name is Lloyd Christmas from the movie Dumb and Dumber and you're driving a moped through the, uh, you know, Aspen Mountains. And then as we all know, it's just go, man. By the way, um, what is the soup du jour? And just a quick little demonstration for you here. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Pretty much anything does this. But if we shift down into reverse, you'll see that uh, this little infotainment system doubles as your backup camera, which is kind of cool. Now, um, also, this RV is equipped with side view cameras. So let's say I'm, uh, I'm coming onto the highway and I've got a merge left. I need to make sure there's not a little Kia Soul in the way. The one thing I thought was kind of screwy about this is it still has that little backup camera schematic on it. It's not really intrusive, but um, I, I think, yeah, okay, there you go. You can turn that off because I'm like, what is the point of that if you're changing lanes? So there you go. We Hey, we discovered something today. Woo! Now, I would have liked to have opened the awning for you, but as you're probably hearing on the microphone, the wind is not letting that happen today, and I didn't feel like turning it into a sailboat. Um, one of the really standout qualities on these, uh, shared with their Jayco cousins, uh, because they have the same legal team, basically, is that two plus three year warranty. Uh, and you have the uh, certain things that the four chassis may go out to as much as five years. So uh, I'm not aware of another manufacturer making something like this that has that kind of coverage. I could be wrong. That uh, front uh, window up there, that is actually a windshield. That is an automotive bonded inset windshield in that forward cab. So that has the same kind of sealants around it and same protection methods as the actual windshield itself. And, I, and that also includes, it's a thicker, heavier, stronger grade of glass in case somebody's tire flings a stone at the front of your beautiful Integra over here. E450 chassis, uh, so, what is it, 6.7.8, oh crap. Their, their new V8, I got my numbers screwed up. I'm sorry, I'll try to put a note on the screen. Up front here, we've got uh, a uh, additional set of um, shocks basically to soak up a lot of the road chatter. You also have a Helwig helper spring for the, um, for the, uh, the rear axle to, to really help offset. What that's going to do is help control a lot of body roll. So when you're going around those uh, crazy curly Q exits, the, uh, the RV's not trying to like, you know, roll itself over like a dog, because uh, that's the last thing you want a motorhome doing, going down the road. Slide awning, standard on these, adding some protection. Um, unfortunately, speaking of wind shields, I need a wind shield to shield me from the wind right now. This is, I like this. I like whenever manufacturers do these little drop down drawbridge style doors. That's something I really appreciate. The, um, can somebody explain to me why? Like almost nobody puts some sort of door strut or hold back or something over the generator door. I don't, I don't understand why that's so uncommon, why nobody does that. But you got your own in 4000 in there. That is our electrical hookup, by the way. Not a whole lot to see in there. There is no hold back for this baggage door as well. And in this crazy, insane wind, I didn't want to just like leave it open, banging around in anything. But this is in the headboard area under the bed. And frankly, I might just hide in there for a little bit because I feel like my face is getting wind burnt. But hey, you know what? I don't care what the weather is. I'm going to be out here recording rain, sleet, or snow. If you watch this channel, you know that when, <laughs> when there's RVs recorded, well, this looks like a job for me, basically. <laughs> Uh, 7,500 pound tow rating. Um, that is becoming a little more common across a couple things out there. Uh, but that 7,500 pound tow rating requires no external, uh, like load leveling anti sway hitching, which uh, there's some manufacturers, if you look at their hitch, it says like 8,100 pound hitch. But it also says if you use an external load leveling hitch system, you don't have to do that here. And a big reason why is the way that they have the chassis upfit done. Uh, effectively, the way that the hitch is um, screwed into the chassis uh, sideways instead of just uh, vertically. Um, again, check out that Greyhawk factory tour I discussed and you can actually physically see that. Another one of the little upfit kind of things that you're getting here on the Integras. Nice little outdoor entertainment. I love the speakers down low so I don't have to uh, complain about them being too high. 
they do a uh, a power step here and that little black um technical term here nubbin that right there is your side view camera so that you can see you have a uh, just an excellent view going right down the side of this thing couple little storage compartments and then we will get ourselves up to the roof take a look at the one piece fiberglass roof that you have on these and that right there uh, that is something where this is in the size of class C where you find some coaches have it and some coaches don't and there's some benefits to it for you when you're driving down the road and man it certainly is nice to see the uh, the shortage of inventory going away although Due to chassis supplies, motorized RVs like the one we're looking at today have still been the hardest thing for dealers to get a hold of, so kind of keep that in mind. But overall, it is getting better. Now up here, we do have a laminated, basically one-piece roof with a fiberglass candy-coated shell. Now that's doing a couple things for us. Being laminated, it is seriously reducing the amount of squeaks and creaks and moans and groans going down the road as compared to a commonly constructed roof with uh, traditional roof trusses. Um, also, being a fiberglass skin, there's very little upkeep that needs to be done on the roof in terms of the skin. Now, it drives me crazy whenever I hear someone say it's a maintenance-free roof because I think some people who don't know any different hear that and think, oh, I don't have to take care of any seals or anything? Terrific! And then they end up with a leak and then they're mad. You still have the exact same seals on this RV as anything else to take care of. Now, there's that roof solar prep plug. I mentioned how there is a factory solar package. What's well, kind of cool, it is uh, prepped and ready. You can always add some solar after the fact or custom craft your own. I know some people who are some real diehard uh, boondock enthusiasts uh, who would rather build their own solar package. And good Lord, I, again, I am just hopeful and I'm praying that this audio is coming out okay because there's just nothing I can do about the wind out here. And it is crazy strong. I mean, there's no trees. It's just open fields. There ain't even corn out here. It's just wind, baby. And I certainly hope the RV blew you away the way this wind is blowing me away. If not, stay tuned. I am working on getting more and more motorized stuff onto this channel, something we haven't had a lot of historically. By the way, if you have any specific requests on certain things you'd like to see, let me know. Um, I will do my best to fulfill those as I visit my different sister stores and travel around. And as you can see by the way the camera's lurching around, I hope you're not getting motion sick. I'm just getting buffeted beyond belief from the wind here. So I'm going to go inside. I'm going to get warmed up. I thank you folks so much for tuning in. Let me know by the way because uh, um, you know I'm still learning my way through some of the motorized stuff um, is there something I'm missing something I'm not doing something I'm not showing on these that would make sense that's more specific to what you want to see on a motorhome as always you guide me on this channel and I just want to fulfill it for you so until then take care stay safe have fun and uh, I didn't even camping happy coaching everyone I don't know go fishing baby Woo!